So in this final lesson, we're going to look at how we can get live data, um, sorry, pre-recorded animation data to be converted using the retargeting nodes that we built in our earlier lesson. So we're going to do that with our Steampunk mech again. Um, this time, we're going to keep it really simple. We're going to bring in the animation blueprint of our Steampunk mesh. And we've got our animation blueprint of our Manny. Okay, now at the moment, these are getting data from live links. So we're going to turn that off because we're no longer working with live data. So I'm going to go into the animation blueprint for the UE4. And that's live link data coming in. We can turn that off. So what we want to do is bring in um, some animation. So we're going to do play animation. And it's found the jog forwards animation that we were using before. So we're going to load that in, compile. And now we've got the jogging animation. Now, if you had any other animation, it will be here. If you've imported a uh, mocap uh, asset library you won't see it on this ue4 model even though they're identical ue4 models it will it would appear with the one that came with the pack so you have to do the retargeting tool again with that one so make sure that you've uh, make, made it re, you know, really organized so you know which one's which so we can close this down so this animation blueprint should now oh dear 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 what's going on there let's change my uh I haven't even charged that. I don't know why that happened. There we go. So UE4 character now playing animation rather than data from the mocap. So that's the jog um, animation. Now, if we go to our animation blueprint for the Steampunk mech, let's say we want that same jog um, asset. So we'll get rid of our retarget pose from mesh. We don't need that now because that was for mocap. Um, it was retargeting information directly from the other character. Now. To be fair, you could leave that in if you wanted to have it run live, but the whole point of this is that you want to have animation data that's made for this character. Uh, so we're going to go to play animation, and you will see that we don't have the jog. We've got other things in here. We've got things that come from other um, other characters that happen to be you know laid out in the right way, but we don't have um, the jog animation that came with the uh, the other character. So if I create this and compile it, that's that's an, an idol that's come in with, um, with probably this character in the first place. Let's just go and check that actually. If we go back to the Steampunk Mesh, uh, what have we got here, demo. Yeah, there we go. There's some animation sequences. So these are the ones that loaded. They were made for this character. So they're the ones that we've seen. So yeah, bring that in, third person jump. Just a little jump, didn't do very much. Player, play. No, it's just going to stand there idle. So that's no good to us. We need to build a specific um, animation for this character from the job. So how do we do that? We have to find the animation that we want to change. So we need to find the jog. Um, how do we find that? It's probably hidden in the plugins folder because it's part of this character. So let's go into his animation blueprint. Now, ideally, this will be saved somewhere sensible on your own so let's go back to our ue4 abp jog forwards it's there um sequence jog forwards so click on the jog to browse to the content and there it is oh yeah of course mannequin ue4 animations so here it is i'm going to right click on it and now because we've got a retargeting system already built we can go to this tool here retarget animation assets and duplicate and retarget animation assets. Brings up this new window. You can't click in it at all unless you've built an IK retargeter, which we have. So we've used it already. So if you haven't done, jump straight to lesson four and you missed the first three, you can have to go back and do lesson two and lesson three again, because this is the same process that we use for live mocap. Um, but you can go straight into, you don't need mocap, that's fine. You go straight into this, but you still need to build the retargeting, retargeting tool. So here you could convert something from UE4 to UE5, UE5 to UE4, but we want to convert UE4 to Steampunk. That's the one we built. So we load that up and we got a preview of our mannequin and we got a preview of the Steampunk mesh. Um, we can rename our assets if we want to. We can change names here. So I'm going to add the prefix, I should add the suffix, um, unders underscore <coughs> Steampunk. Because there's now going to be two versions of Jog. There's going to be Jog for the UE4 and Jog for the Steampunk. And at the moment, it's trying to save it in the same place. So we're going to change this to go into the same animation folder as our Steampunk mesh. 
and then I hit retarget, oh, sorry, remap referenced assets will stay on, hit retarget, and it's going to convert it for you. And it's added it in here. And you can see there, we've now got a new animation sequence where it's converted it into this character. We can go in here and do a bit more refining on the keyframes if you want to, but that's all there is to it. And if you have um, a large library of assets, you can put them all in there in one go and have it convert the whole lot. So it's a really powerful tool. So now we have our jog control. Let's go back into our character, the ABP for our steampunk mech. Let's load that up. But we now need our animation. So if we do play animation, you should see play jog forward steampunk. It's now there. So let's compile that. Save. And now when we hit play, we should see both of them playing. There we go. And that is animation data that was never made for Steampunk Beck playing on it after we retargeted it from the UE4 mannequin. Now, just to really hammer this home, I'm going to show you one more thing just to do it properly. We're going to do the whole thing again, but we're going to do it with mocap data I'm going to bring into the library. So I'm going to go to the marketplace. I'm going to change from characters to animations. I'm going to import this generic NPC anim pack. And I'm going to do this at speed and you're going to get to see the whole thing all over again. Um, so I'm going to bring this into my steampunk mech project. Import that. Complete. Let's get rid of that. So steampunk mech. Uh, third person. This is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for generic NPC pack. Right. Now this is loads of animations. But these will only run on the UE4 character that came with that pack. If I open up this ABP here for my original UE4, let's just go into it to demonstrate. Oh no, where is it? Oh yeah, so it was the right place retargeting. Let's open up that UE4. The animations that came in with this pack, then watch it will work now but it should not come in, so it won't let you bring it in. Skeletons are not compatible. Even though they're the same UE4 skeleton rig that was built using the same original content, it will not let you load it. You have to retarget it. That is why this is such an important tool. So let's go back to our animations here. We're going to go and find our character that came with it in mesh, skeletal mesh. Okay, this is a whole different skeletal mesh called SK Mannequin looks exactly the same. So we're going to do the whole process again. We're going to create an IK rig. We're going to choose the skeletal mesh that came with this character. So this is where it gets tricky because they look the same. So we've got two SK Mannequins. We've got to check the path. We've got one that goes to Mannequin UE4 meshes and one that goes to generic NPC and impact character mesh. That's what we want. So we can select that. IK. We're going to call it NPC um anim underscore ue4 and this is where labeling would be so important because it's different looks exactly the same i'm not going to do all of the fingers because i want to be quick just to make the point so we're going to do our spine we're going to retarget that and um, do you want to add a goal no no goals um we can do the upper arm to the hand and i'm just going to do this off in the window here just to make it quicker we're going to do upper arm to hand on this side. New target chain. Right arm with no goal. And neck and head. UV target chain. Head. No goal. Thigh to ball, but not the calf. New target chain. You can see how quick you can do this once you know what you're doing. Um, oh, and on this one, thigh down there. I don't want those to twist twist bones. Right, left leg. Okay, no goal. I now have everything I need to build this IK. Close that. Now I'm going to build the retargeting tool. So I'm going to move that IK rig back into my retargeting folder where the others live. So now I'm going to build a retargeter, animation, IK rig, IK retargeter. 
I've got to pick the right one. This again, where it's so useful to name things correctly, because now it's really clear which one it is. I've got UE4, I've got UE4 Mannequin, and I've got NPC Anim UE4. We know that's the one we need. So we can build that, RTG underscore NPC Anim. I'm going to two steampunk double click on that right now this is my retargeter we can load up the steampunk mesh okay and now we've got all of these um chain maps to check so we've got left arm left index now they we, we built all of the fingers but we didn't build them for our new source so we have to turn all these off because otherwise it's going to try and drive it. See, left leg to left ring, that's going to do something horrible. So make sure that all of those are set to none, so it's not going to try and drive those fingers. Um, of course, we can go back later and build the fingers, if you so wished. Head, left leg, right leg. Okay, that's done. Now, if we load any of these assets, you'll see that they're now retargeted. This all came from that pack. Now, not all of it's working perfectly in terms of like the layout, it's a bit of a different size, but you can see here, look, it's Anim Farm, what's going to happen? Oh dear. So now we've got a really cool pack of animations that we bought off a website, uh, off the marketplace, and we can play it on any of our characters. So that's the retargeting tool. Okay, so now we're going to try to get that content to play uh, in a level sequence. Now, the reason you might want to do this is because you might want to queue up loads of different uh, bits of animation to play in your level sequence to, to take somebody from a walk to a run or maybe to play some mocap content you've created. So the first thing we need to do is to include uh, a master level sequence or a level sequence. So I've already got one in here. I'm going to create a new one called add level sequence. The first one was just my test one. Uh, we're going to put this in this folder cinematic. Cinematic might not be created for you already. If you create a master sequence, it will automatically create you a, um, a cinematic folder. But because I've already created a, a test version of this, so I'm going to call this ls underscore um, theme punk cinematic. Just keep it different from the one I've already got. Okay, now we've got a cinematic track. Now to put our mocap data in there, we need to build a blueprint for our character. We don't have that yet. And we can't use the animation blueprint. It has to be a specific um, character from the... Um, uh, it has to be a specific camera made... Uh, sorry. It has to be a specific uh, character built uh, with the, uh, the animation tools built into it that we've got. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. So we've, we've got our level sequence. Let's go back to our retargeting tools here we're going to create a a blueprint in this folder the targeting folder blueprint class and we want an actor just a normal actor bp for blueprint underscore theme punk mech and we're going to double click on that to open it now in here we need to add a skeletal mesh for our steampunk mech so let's add that in call him theme punk um, I think we probably should have made that SK underscore for skeleton mesh. Now we're gonna have here we if you wanted to play it in the controller or you wanted to play something just to see how it looks you would add in the animation blueprint or the asset but because we're going to use the level sequence we can leave this on use custom mode or just, just leave it blank. It doesn't matter. We're not going to be uh, setting it here in the blueprint. We push that information from the level sequence. So we just add the skeletal mesh actor. So let's look for steampunk. We've got all of our steampunk stuff here, but we've got our SK, same one we used earlier. There's our steampunk mech. And that's that. So we now have a character with our steampunk data in it. Nothing else there we need to change anything. So I'm going to compile and save. And we're going to click and drag that into the scene. Okay, now when we've got it selected, we can now apply this to the level sequencer. Uh, if we click track, it will allow you to choose from the actor to sequence. You've got a list of everything in the scene, but if you've got it selected in the editor, when you click, uh, well, you'll see up here, add BP Steampunk Mech, Steampunk Mech. Basically, anything that you've got selected in the scene is now available to be added using this function. So we're going to click on add. 
is now in the timeline. If we go on the track tool, this is where you can add in all the different tracks that will be controlled in the timeline editor. So this could be anything from transforms or the audio, but we're going to go into animation and we've got a list here of all the animations that we have retargeted. So let's just choose one, uh, showing goods. There we go. And now if we play the timeline, we click somewhere. Our character is now playing the mocap data. Now just to mix this up a little bit, you could blend these. So let's take that track again and have another animation layer, this time Smith working, just picks it at random. We can blend these by pulling them over top of each other. When two animation tracks are overlapping, it will like lurp between them. So you get a combination of him trying to sell some goods and trying to work at Smithy. So there we go. Now you can do all the things that you normally get to do with level sequences. We can uh, we click on it here in the editor. We can say, you know, autoplay. So it plays automatically when the scene loads. We can loop it indefinitely. So that it will run when the scene runs. And then if I hit play, the character's automatically playing and it'll just keep looping those two animations with the 165 frames that we created before. And that's it. That is how you retarget animations and put them into your blueprints for your characters. Uh, I hope you get to use it. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can reach me via the YouTube channel or you can message me through Copper Candle's website, james at coppercandle.co.uk. Thank you very much.